We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. Uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, you start trying to regulate uh, thoughts, you start trying to regulate beliefs rather than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans. This is the Civil Defense Radio and Television Service. All citizens receiving this broadcast should watch or listen for future updates regarding the ongoing nuclear emergency that has taken place across our once great nation. Thanks to Barack Hussein Obama and his globalists, we all will be here for a very long time. All emergency public shelters are supplied with all the necessary items to help maintain life and health for as long as their provisions hold out. Your shelter administrator will distribute those amounts he feels are needed only at specific times and only when absolutely necessary. This is basic civil defense information from the Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense, Washington. If our nation ever comes under nuclear attack and you take shelter to protect yourself from radioactive fallout, water is the key emergency supply. Each person will need at least a quart a day, and if there's not enough water stored in your shelter, here are additional places to find it, especially if you plan to use a home shelter where you'll be on your own. Local authorities may instruct you to turn off the main water valve. When you do this, the pipes inside the house will still be full of water. Next, turn on the faucet located at the highest point in your house to let air into the system. Then use water from the faucet located at the lowest point in your house. You can also use water in your hot water heater, in the flush tanks, or water in ice cube trays, milk, soft drinks, canned juices. If necessary, you can even drink water that's been exposed to fallout. However, very young children should be given non-contaminated liquids when available. For more information, consult your local civil defense office. All women and children are required daily examinations to detect possible excessive radioactive levels in their bloodstream and for any potential threat to the other occupants in the shelter. Men and women will be separated in the shelter for sleeping accommodations, unless they are married. Children will also be separated for their safety from the other adults in the shelter. Infants and toddlers will be permitted to stay with their mothers, but only if they don't harm them. Any person who willfully or intentionally harms a child will be cast from the shelter into the radioactive wasteland outside where they can take their own chances on the surface and we hope you remember to bring your rad gear with you too. If such person refuses to leave the shelter, the administrator is authorized to use lethal force and terminate their lives. 
The useless body will packed in a body bag and held in the morgue for any future persons who might die from radioactive poisoning, which has been determined will happen to approximately 20% of the populace in the shelter over a period of 6 to 8 months after the bombs drop. This is basic civil defense information from the Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense, Washington. If an enemy nuclear attack ever occurs, many areas of the nation would be threatened by radioactive fallout. If there is public shelter nearby, go to it. Or if you have a home shelter, use it, unless your local government has given you other instructions. But if regular shelter isn't available, and you have a house with a below-ground basement or storm cellar, you could still improvise some protection from radioactive fallout. In a basement, choose a corner most below ground and away from windows. Drag in a heavy bench or table to make a roof for your shelter. Cover it with trunks, stacks of firewood, flagstones, books, anything that is thick and heavy. Then wall yourself in on the two open sides with heavy appliances or dressers or chests backed with earth or sand to help absorb radiation. For more information on this and other ways to improvise protection from fallout, check with your local civil defense office. For the morale of this public shelter, you will be allowed to view programs that help you to feel as happy as we can make you while your stay in this shelter isn't possible to determine in the future. Your administrator has access to medications that will be dispensed on a first-come, first-service basis and are limited to two days for those who have mental retardation, post-traumatic stress disorder, or have had lobotomies. Any other who have medications with them will be allowed to have those medicines until they are exhausted. Then you should ask your shelter administrator if any substitute medications are available. This includes heart condition patients, diabetic patients, heartworm patients, this would mean dogs or cats, and psychotic patients who attempt to kill themselves while in the shelter. These individuals will be forced out of the shelter at the discretion of the administrator himself and will not be permitted any food or water until the decision is made. This is basic civil defense information from the Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense, Washington. If a nuclear attack ever occurs, go to a public shelter if one is nearby or if you have a home shelter, use it. But if regular shelter isn't available, and even if your home has no basement, you could still improvise some limited fallout protection in a first floor hall or room, away from outer walls and windows. Use doors off their hinges, furniture and appliances, plus stacks of other shielding material, such as trunks or drawers, filled with sand or earth, to make an enclosure large enough to live in for a short time. Some homes without basements have a crawl space between the first floor and the ground, Select the crawl space area under the center of the house and place shielding material around it. On the floor above, place other shielding material to provide additional protection for the shelter space. For more information on how to improvise fallout protection, check with your local civil defense director. The shelter contains a series of air ducts that filter out the radioactive particulars and must be replaced periodically. Any person who wishes to help the administrator with this dangerous task will be given an extra food ration during the normal distribution period. Anyone who refuses to help the administrator as needed will be forced to leave the shelter or be terminated. These precautions are necessary to preserve the lives of all persons in the shelter. All must help and work together, to preserve human life. No girl will be permitted any menial labor other than helping their mothers knit blankets, mittens, or other such items that help with comfort of the other occupants. Corporal punishment will be exercised on every child or adult who doesn't do as they are told be a senior adult occupant or the administrator. There are no exceptions to this rule and will stringently be enforced during your time in the shelter. Books, magazines, newspapers from some 60 years ago will also be provided to help entertain you as you look back on a time when things were so much better than they are now. See how much better they dressed, kept themselves respectable, and obeyed their elders. This is basic civil defense information from the Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense, Washington. If you receive warning of an enemy attack, get to the nearest fallout shelter promptly. But if you're caught in the open, and there's a brilliant nuclear flash in the distance, take cover immediately. Even miles away, you may be exposed within seconds to a searing heat wave from the explosion, followed by a blast wave and flying debris. Get into the nearest building immediately, or into a ditch or culvert, beneath a parked car, behind a tree or a wall, anything solid that will give you some measure of protection. Curl up in a ball and cover your head with your arms. Stay there until heat and blast waves have passed. 
Then go to the nearest fallout shelter before radioactive fallout starts drifting down. If there's no fallout shelter within range, go to the nearest large building and take shelter in the basement or one of the inner hallways. Know in advance what to do in any emergency situation. Find out from your local civil defense office. Not in this house, Johnny King. Not anymore. Gee, how come? Because we've discovered something else. Well, looks like Johnny's discovering Diet Coke is the one calorie taste worth leaving Pepsi for. Now with three cans free in the 15 pack. Plenty for family and friends. Hey, Mom, with three cans of Diet Coke free, there's enough for the gang. Just for the taste of it. Oh, Johnny. Diet Coke. Your shelter is your home. It is your responsibility as the woman occupant to keep it clean and tidy every day. Those who do not wish to help should be aware that the administrator has riot gear to punish any woman who is not cooperative. He has whips, taser guns, and other disciplinary devices at his disposal to keep all in line. Rations will also be eliminated for approximately one week in solitary confinement. Don't for your shelter administrator to use these extreme measures to gain your cooperation. This completes the automated information you have been told about. Be watching for more programs coming up and if you have any questions, ask your administrator during these program breaks. We all must live together in this ghastly place, let's make the best of it. Thanks for your attention and for watching the civil defense radio and television in shelter service. Have a wonderful day. This is basic civil defense information from the Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense, Washington. Especially in time of emergency, think before you act and follow instructions by responsible authorities. You may receive warning of an attack by outdoor warning systems or by radio or television or even by word of mouth. Unless local officials have instructed you otherwise, go immediately to a public fallout shelter or to your home fallout shelter. Then tune your radio to any local station that is broadcasting and listen for official information. Follow whatever instructions are given. Don't use the telephone to obtain further information and advice about the emergency. Depend on radio, as the government will be broadcasting all the information it has available. The telephone lines will be needed for official calls. Help keep them open. Let me repeat, in time of emergency, for official government information and civil defense instructions, tune your radio to any local station that is broadcasting. Ladies, don't feel uncomfortable in that seat. Many feminine products are available from your administrator. He might not have them all, but ask anyway. Notice to all female occupants, no product used may be flushed into any disposal unit in the shelter. Please dispose of an appropriately labeled biohazard can or just throw it out of the shelter, but remember you'll be glowing afterwards and won't be allowed back into the shelter for fear of contamination. A public service announcement from the United Socialist States Armed Forces Network, servicing our occupants with compassion and irrelevance. This is basic civil defense information from the Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense, Washington. There's one easy, sensible thing your family should do to prepare for a possible time of emergency. Set aside a few simple, basic supplies you'll need to take to the public fallout shelter. Supplies to help keep you and your family alive and well in event of enemy attack. For instance, any special medicines or diet foods required by members of the family, insulin, heart tablets, baby food, and other infant supplies, blankets, a battery-powered radio, a flashlight, extra batteries. And if the nearest public shelter hasn't been stocked yet with emergency rations and supplies, you'll need to take as much food and water as you can carry. Emergency supplies are needed for a private home shelter, too. Lay in enough food, canned or packaged and preferably pre-cooked, for two weeks, plus enough drinking water in tightly kept containers or jars to give each person at least a quart a day or more. For help in making up a list of needed supplies, consult your local civil defense office. Attention all occupants, we hope you enjoy the forthcoming program for your enjoyment. Please no kissing while you enjoy this program. Public displays of affection are not allowed and will be punished by corporal paddling or 20 lashings. Sit back and relax. Take a sedative at your earliest convenience. Available at your administrator's consignment desk right now. Don't delay, get it today. All programs are copyrighted by the United Socialist this States Armed Forces Network. Copyright 2027. Office of Civil Defense, Washington. 
Wherever you go, whatever you do, it's always wise to keep an eye open for the black and yellow public fallout shelter signs. Each one marks a place that's been thoroughly checked for proper shielding against radioactive fallout, and in many cases, already stocked with emergency food rations, water, and basic survival equipment. Knowing where the nearest one is could save you crucial minutes in time of emergency. If your local government has instructed you to go to a specific public shelter in event of nuclear attack, find out exactly where it's located and the best way to reach it promptly. Check on whether there's a shelter in or near your child's school, and if not, find out what other actions would be taken by the school authorities to protect him in emergency. In short, take time now to make a family emergency plan, and then make sure every member of your family knows it. This is basic civil defense information from the Department of Defense, Office of Civil Defense, Washington. If there is ever a nuclear emergency, special fire precautions should be taken, particularly if you plan to use a home shelter. Keep out the intense heat rays from a nuclear explosion by closing your doors, windows, and Venetian blinds. If you don't have Venetian blinds, coat windows with whitewash, household cleaning powder, even mud, or cover windows with aluminum foil. Unless authorities advise otherwise, fill buckets and bathtubs with water. Keep a garden hose connected. Fill containers with sand for firefighting. If it's an electrical fire, shut off the electricity first at the main switch, then put out the flame. If it's an oil or grease fire, shut off the supply of whatever is burning. Smother the flame. Don't use water. With a gas fire, shut off the gas supply. Then use water, sand, or earth to put out the fire. Act quickly. To know the danger of fire and what to do about it, consult your local civil defense director. This is the Civil Defense Radio and Television Service. All citizens receiving this broadcast should watch or listen for future updates regarding the ongoing nuclear emergency that has taken place across our once great nation. Thanks to Barack Hussein Obama and his globalists, we all will be here for a very long time. All emergency public shelters are supplied with all the necessary items to help maintain life and health for as long as their provisions hold out. Your shelter administrator will distribute those amounts he feels are needed only at specific times and only when absolutely necessary.
around the world challenge the powerful, and they bring all of this to every story that breaks. We've got breaking news, and it's good news. And touches your heart. How do you even say thank you? Thank you is not big enough. Thank you. 